before we get started in part two, I'd just like to acknowledge my students down at the Bega campus. Um, they're a wonderful bunch of students and I've really enjoyed my time working with them this semester. Okay, in Aboriginal Eight Ways of Learning, the people sitting around the campfire, relates to symbol, image and metaphor and essential to Aboriginal pedagogy. According to Ben Dairai, Aboriginal pedagogy utilises all the senses to build symbolic meaning in support of learning new concepts, drawing on both concrete and abstract imagery. The hand symbolises non-verbal methods in Aboriginal pedagogy. Kinesthetic, hands-on learning is a characteristic element of Aboriginal pedagogy or learning. Language plays an important role in, in Indigenous pedagogy and also the use of silence is a feature of Aboriginal learning and language use. Wheaton states that Aboriginal learners can test knowledge non-verbally through experience, introspection and practice, thereby becoming critical thinkers who can judge the validity of new knowledge independently. So it's important for teachers to have multiple ways of assessing students' work and knowledge and understanding. With these last three symbols, I want to take some time at the end to show you a clip which relates to these three different ideas of learning, connection to country and storytelling in a non-linear way of learning. Um, I think that perhaps you might be able to have a look at this at the end and just jot down the headings for each of these last three and then find ways in this end clip story um, where these things are shown in an explicit way. So Aboriginal pedagogy is about connecting and relating learning to the land. Aboriginal people have strong connections between land and the knowledge and learning is widely documented. Aboriginal pedagogies are intensely ecological and place-based and being drawn from the landscape within a profound ancestral and personal relationship with place. Story and personal narrative is vital in Aboriginal education and pedagogy. Elders teach using stories to actively involve learners in introspection and analysis. It's a powerful tool. Egan states learning is grounded in exchange of personal and wider narrative and it works for all students. And finally, Aboriginal pedagogy contains non-linear ways of learning. It's a complex cycle of learning comprised of processes that occur continuously. Gibson states that Aboriginal people think and perceive in a way that's not constrained by the serial or sequential nature of verbal thinking. And Linkson suggests that non-linear Indigenous ideas of overlap and synergy can give a view of two worlds as complementary rather than oppositional. I hope you enjoy the clip. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away. <laughs> nah, not like that. I'm only joking. But I am going to tell you a story. It's not your story. It's my story. A story like you've never seen before. But you want a proper story, huh? then I must tell you something. 
of my people and my land. Then you can see the story and know it. This land began in the beginning. Yulungur, that great water governor, he traveled here. Yulungur made all this land and he made this water and he made this swamp that stretches long and gives us life. Come from a water hole in this land you longer made. I was looking like a little fish in my water hole. Then my father come near my water hole. I asked him for my mother. I wanted to be born. My father pointed out one of his wives. That's your mother, he told me. I waited until the right time, and I went just like that into her vagina. Then my father had a dream. That dream made him know she had a little one inside her. That little one was me. <laughs> when I die, I will go back to my water hole. I'll be waiting there like a little fish, waiting to be born again. You didn't know all that, did you? Huh? But it's a true thing. It's always like that for my people. Now we have to find where the story is. The story I'm going to tell you. We have to go back a long time. Back to the time of my ancestors. Okay, let's for a moment just have another quick look at the, um, all the elements of the Aboriginal eight ways of learning together. And what I'd like to do is just to, for you to think about the connectedness of each of these elements within the whole framework of understanding um, Aboriginal ways of learning. Now I'd like to have a look at a few different um, ideas within um, First Nations pedagogy. I did mention at the beginning that we would be having a look at some of the similarities and comparisons and I'm going to leave that up to you to have a look at and talk about and discuss within your tutorials. And you're probably aware that there are many different ways of showing or many different frameworks for showing Indigenous knowledge and understanding. And this framework here is from the First Nations Pedagogy website. And just take a moment to see where they link in with the eight ways of learning, the Indigenous or Aboriginal eight ways of learning. And just have a bit of a discussion on how these link in and, and where you can see the links in both frameworks. So what does it mean for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students when teachers work within that cultural interface and value Indigenous knowledge? Part 3 looks at some students and their thoughts on those types of things. 